Welcome back. In our third section, our focus is going to be SVG. SVG is a technology that is really cool that's been around for a while that is based off of XML that is intended for drawing out vector illustrations. In this section, we're going to learn how to work with it and get introduced to it. We're going to go ahead and create a basic SVG element and we're going to draw out a rectangle. We're going to draw out a circle. We're going to also go ahead and go through more steps involved with the process of defining and creating an SVG image. Once we know the basic constructs of how to work with SVG, we'll go on into integrating it into HTML5 and we'll see the differences between traditional SVG and SVG that is integrated with HTML5. Once we're done with that integration process, we're going to then go ahead and create our most complicated visual element in SVG, which is going to be a polygon. Last but not least, we'll make sure also to animate it all using native SVG technologies to do that. So let's jump right into our first lecture, which is creating a basic SVG image. In this lecture, we're going to go ahead and actually declare the SVG format and get introduced to the basics of how it works. We're going to also declare and define the version of our SVG and understand why that's important. Last but not least, we're going to go out and actually draw out a shape. We're going to draw out a rectangle. And as we do that, we'll be introduced to the fill and stroke, which are the two main methods that enable us to fill out content and outline that we define. So let's jump right into it and let's start creating our first SVG image. SVG is an integral part of really the modern web today in HTML5. So let's go ahead and understand what it is at all. We're not going to learn everything about SVG, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a new SVG file starting from an image that has nothing in it. It is a vector based image format. Go ahead into your source files and just find your sample.svg and open it up on your browser directly and also open it up in your editor. And we're going to work directly inside of the file, introducing the basic concepts of SVG. Now, the first basic construct, just like in HTML, is defining a root element, which is the SVG element. We'll open and close it, and that's it. We've created more or less a legal SVG already at this stage. All that's left for us to do, really, if I go ahead and save this and go ahead and click on refresh, we're probably not going to get an error, although it's not really going to do what we want it to do. Now, this is just a plain old XML file, which is not what we really want. We really want to tell the browser, by the way, this SVG file is literally an SVG. It's not just looks like one, it actually is one. To do that, we're going to have to create a namespace for our element. And I'm going to do that by setting a XMLNS equals, and then define inside of here the definition of the type of file format it is, or the type of XML that it is. To do that, I'm going to type ahead HTTP colon colon www w 3 dot org slash 2000 slash svg by doing this i declared to the browser and whoever is going to interpret this that this is an svg file beyond that i also want to tell the browser what version of this file format it is and to do that i'm going to type here version and set a version type which currently it's standing at 1.2 but we're going to go for 1.1 which is the most common version currently available on most browsers as well if I go ahead and click here on save and go back and click on refresh, we're going to see something a little bit different. Now we're not going to see the SVG file itself as a source file, but the browser is going to interpret it and display it as the content that's within. Now, one of the first issues that we have right now is that we didn't define the size of our canvas. And when we're talking about canvas, I'm really talking about the area that is going to be visible in the application. To define the visible area in the application, I'm going to add two new properties, which will be the width. And I'm going to set a width of, let's say, 500. And I'm also going to go ahead and set a height. And I'm going to set a height of 450. Now, just by doing this, we created ourselves our canvas. But if we go and click on refresh again, we're not really going to see much, but we're, we do have here an element. For us to be able to see what's going on here, and because I'm working with SVG version 1.1 and not 1.2, I, I can't just go ahead and color the canvas. It's transparent. Instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside of my SVG and introduce to you our first actual visual element, our first basic element. And that basic element is a rectangle, which is named rect. And every 
element, especially one that is self-enclosed, I'm just going to close it, and I'm going to define for it a width, and I'm going to say that its width is going to be exactly the same thing and as our total canvas size. I'm going to go ahead and define a fill color so we'll actually be able to see something, and we're going to draw something out. So literally what I did, I defined the size of my element, and then I said a fill. Now, by the way, the fill command is one of those basic attributes that are available to basically every single or almost every single element in SVG, not including the actual SVG canvas itself, which is transparent by default. If I go ahead and click here on save, I should now see a rectangle that is going to take the full space of our 500 by 450 square that we've created. All that's left for me to do is nothing. I created a rectangle. But I want to talk about a few more things that are just throughout every SVG element. And we're going to meet this also in Canvas in a later section. Every single element could have a fill or a stroke, or it could have both. Now, in this case, if I set my stroke size and I define my stroke color, let's say I decide I want it to be black. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to be black. Or I could go ahead and put here a hexadecimal value or any valid color value that would define the color. So in this case, it would set it to be black. Now, because my size of my width and height are literally taking the full area of our application, you'll see that it, we're only seeing a half a pixel really of black here. What I really wanna do is I wanna just explain it very, very clearly, is that when I define this, my stroke itself, its default size, if I'm gonna to go to my stroke width and add that as another property, and I'm gonna set it to be zero. What that will do is basically make it completely go away. Now imagine the stroke itself is actually starting right here because our rectangle is taking the full visible area of our canvas. If I go ahead here and I say, hey, I want it to be 10. I want it to be a really big 10 pixels. Notice that right now I'm only seeing roughly five pixels. The reason why I know that is also if I go ahead here and just make my width a little bit larger, let me make, make it just a little wider, our full canvas size a little wider. Notice the size of my element and notice how it's doubling in size, the width on this area. The reason is, is because a line itself, contrary to a stroke, starts from the middle. So if it's starting from the middle, it's going to grow five pixels to both ends. But because our width and height is the full width and height of our canvas area, then we're not seeing the full spectrum of it. So that's really the basics of fill and stroke and the basics of really drawing and creating an element in SVG. In the next lecture, we're going to go ahead and also move on to creating circles, but we're also going to talk about how to position elements smartly. So we'll talk about that in the next lecture.